I'm Emily Powers, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this um, Impressionist style um, tree. Um, this is my example painting, and this is my reference photo that I got off of Pixabay. So I think it'll be really easy for beginners. And the um, canvas panel that I'm using um, is a 11 by 14 from Dowler Rowney. I think I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying that quite right, but it came with a pack of three. So, and I'm doing it vertical so that I have more room for my tree. And actually, when I did this example um, compared to the photo it kind of it narrows more than I narrowed it it should be more like this and mine kind of goes straight so I'm gonna try to fix that but the paint that I'm using is all from Liquitex Basics um, the brand Liquitex Basics or Artist Loft um, student level so I'll put in the description which colors are which, but um, this is titanium white, unbleached titanium, deep magenta, um, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And you don't have to have the exact colors I have, that's just what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use a one inch flat brush a small bright um i'm not sure what size this is it's probably a little smaller than a half an inch but you'd probably um actually i might use something slightly bigger because my board is bigger than my um my example so i might use this and gold brush, it's a little bigger, but we'll see when we get to that. And then I've got a 3 8 inch Lunar Blender from the select line of Princeton. And that's going to be for the um, laying in of the trunk before I do the last step. And the last step I'm doing with a palette knife to give it texture. So this is round, rounded one, like an oval shape. And it's from Artist Loft. And really the only reason I picked it is because I thought it would be a good size to get. It wouldn't be too big and not too small, but depending on the canvas size and everything you're using, you might have to change it the size. But I'm going to take my spray bottle and spray a few times just to help the paint flow a little bit. I'm going to wet my brush down. And I'm going to start with a lot of this white. And I'm going to add equal parts of phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Because I don't really think this sky color would be the same with just one or the other, but you could use, if you only had one, you could use just one. I'm gonna start by putting this top in. So the top is gonna be dark, and then it kind of fades into the light. So by the time it gets to the bottom, it's almost completely white. And if it's kind of streaky from the white, that's okay. It'll just look like clouds. It'll be fine. And every time um, that I don't have quite enough paint, I add a little white to it so that the further down I go, the lighter it'll get. So you can see it's getting lighter 
every time. And try as hard as you can to um, try to cover up all the white. If you can't cover it all the first time, then you can um, add a second layer, layer and just do this step second time. Which we, I don't think we'll have to do. It's doing pretty good. And I'm, I'm keeping my brush hydrated by dipping it in my water jar. So you want to make sure you do that. Because if your brush tends to want to like stick to the canvas and it doesn't really want to flow, then you need to add some water. It'll help it to go smoother. And now we're just putting, it's like almost, it's just tinted the blue, it's like very light blue here. So now we've got dark to light, and I'm going to. Um, blow dry this, my hair dryer, and um, dry it completely before doing the next step. Okay, so now this is dry. Um, it's a little wet right here, but I'll just not touch that part right now. And I'm going to grab some spool chalk. Um, I'm going to grab my red or pinkish color since the leaves are going to be red. I don't think that it would show up on the camera if I used white. So, so in the picture, it's kind of, this is just like right on the end here. And then this one... If this is the half and you split it again, it's almost if you split it again, but right next to it. So you split in half, split that in half, and split in that in half, and it's going to be right next to it. So I just split it, split it again, split it again, so it should start right about there. And then my center is probably right in here, so I'm just going to make a dot where the center is and let's see it's kind of if you cut this in half it kind of stops right in here so comes up and your line doesn't have to be perfect because trees are bumpy and then it kind of comes up and then there's some trees in the way. And then this, there's a, it's, that's right where that blue is. So we're gonna kinda come in a little bit and then come out. And there's like a hump where the, um, I think they cut off the trunk at some point. And then this goes down. So, actually this might be a little bigger right here. So, then this kind of comes and curves this way and goes down. So I'm just kind of figuring out where my, um, where my branches and things are going to go. And it doesn't have to be exact because, um, because trees 
they even looking up at this angle they're going to be all sorts of different shapes and things the leaves are going to be covering it in different places so you really don't have to worry a whole lot about it see some brown up in here it comes off I don't want to touch this corner right there because it's like right here that <laughs> it's wet. So as long as I stay away from that spot, should be good. And then there's like a branch. It kind of like goes from like this big trunk to this small uh, branch. I don't really know exactly what's going on there, but good draw that because that's the way that it goes so and that's the nice thing is that if you have a photo you may not really know where things are coming from why it looks the way it does but if you just go by what the photo looks like then you should be good so you really don't even have to put the branches in this exact position, but um, just, I mean, you could even probably go out to your yard and look up and take a picture of a tree, find a tree somewhere, look up and take it and use that picture. That's whatever you want to do. And I'm going to start by putting in the uh, leaves, some of the leaves. And I'm going to use this angle brush. It's probably about an half an inch, maybe. So I'm gonna wet that and it's really light, but there is some kind of pink in it. It is very light. So keep Keep it, uh, just you only need a little bit of this pink, not a whole lot. And mm, I think I added a little bit of the cadmium red medium so that it's not just pink, it's a little more salmon. And I'm just going to kind of go in here where the pink spots are. And as long if you twist your brush in different directions, it'll kind of um, make different shapes. So you could press it down like that, or do some dots, or you could kind of just swipe it and just kind of just have fun. Play around with the different shapes. The angle brushes can make a lot of different shapes. And I'm go I'm not really worrying about going over this tree trunk because if we try not to, then we probably end up putting like this halo where there's like a line of blue right by our trunk and there's not really any leaves, which would not be natural so don't be scared to go over your trunk morning out so I'm gonna mix a little more I think I'm gonna need some more white soon and there's like a lot of this up in here so we can 
pretty much fill that in with it because there's so much of it and then you can go back later and if some of the blue pokes through that's okay because leaves um, they can be um, if you see in the picture there is a little bit of blue because it's really fuzzy in here which the effect the technique I'm using doesn't make it as fuzzy because I'm doing it for beginners but um, there would be some blue that would peek through um, and because it's blurred it almost looks like blue leaf almost but it's really just the sky poking through so um, really this pink color is mainly um, on this side of the um, the tree so there's not as much on this side it's a little darker on the opposite side so this side's probably where the light's hitting it and so now I'm going to add some more deep magenta and the cadmium red medium and when I load my brush too thick I just scoop it up and twist and that gets the extra off so basically it's the same color just slightly darker and it's mainly on this side there is some on this side but this is almost like this color um, pink but it's just darker so there's not going to be a whole lot of light pink on that side it's going to be more medium color you don't have to go over the entire thing you can leave some spaces and the spaces do not have to match up with the spaces in the picture I made my spaces kind of sort of match up in my example but it really wasn't it really wasn't very accurate so just do it however you want to you could really use um, you could change the color of the tree even if you wanted to but I thought since it was fall that I would do something that looked like fall and you could use um, if you don't have a brush like this you could use a bright like I was going to use I may even still use it in some area. I'm not really sure right now, but we'll see. Okay, and there's some of this darker pink like inside the lighter color. So it's almost like the darker color has um, light around it. So because the light's shining through it, it's, it has this lighter pink around the color. We may have to put some more of this lighter pink in after we add the red, but we'll see how it turns out.
just in a little bit in that area right here. Um, not a whole lot though, you don't want to cover the light pink because it is very, very light right there. Okay, and now, thinking what I want to do, I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to take some of the yellow and add white to it. Take a little bit of the red, it's not so bright, yellow. second version by adding some more red to it. So that's more orangey. And I'm going to start with the lighter color and add it kind of in with the pink. Kind of where the light color was, the light pink. There's quite a bit in, in here with this. It really isn't a whole lot of the yellow, but I'm kind of adding more because um, the technique we're going to use for the red, um, it could, it's probably going to cover up a lot of this light color. Um, so by adding more of the light, then when we go to cover up some of this, it'll still show through. So if we put only what we needed, it'd probably end up covering it all up and you'd have to add a whole lot more at the end. It's okay if it mixes a little bit with the pink if you touch an area that's not quite dry. Okay. Clean my brush out. And... Now, I am going to do something you probably think is really odd, but I'm just going to take, um, you know, actually I should probably do some red first. I, the way I'm going to do the, um, red to make it bright is by putting white down and then um, basically going back over on top of the white with the red, but um, I think I need to put some of the red before I do that um, or else it might, might look a little different than my original. So I'm, I took some cadmium um, red medium and deep magenta, more of the red than the magenta. And I'm going basically in the areas where there is not any pink. 
Now there's gonna be some places that I'm going to leave um, with blue shine, but I'm not gonna do that um, with everything. I'm, I'm going to fill in a lot of this, but you do want a little bit of it showing through in some places. You can go on top of the pink too, because just like we put the darker pink on top of the lighter, we're going to put the um, reds on top of the darker pinks so that um, it'll look like a gradual change from the red to the pinks and the yellows. So. Because when light hits through oh, something like a leaf, it kind of it kind of makes the outer edges shine and makes them bright. So if you don't have any of the shiny parts first, then when we go with the red, it'll it'll look just plain red, and there won't be any other colors in it. Some more red. More pink. Mix it again. And this can really be relaxing because you just basically dot around the whole board. You really don't have to worry too much about where your colors are going as long as you layer them in the right order. There's probably some technique that you could um, add some red first and then do some of the pink and yellow, but this is the way I figured out how to do it, so this is the way I'm going to show you how to do it. And I can see that I didn't add enough pink, but we can go back and add some on top and go back with the red over if we need to. And you can see when I go over the pink, how it does not completely like cover it. It's because the red um, is transparent, so it will it'll kind of show a little bit um, through. So. Um, which is kind of a good thing because then we can do techniques like glazing where we put down the white and then put the red over it. We would be able to do that if it wasn't transparent. I mean, we would have to water it down a whole lot more, but you can pretty much use it plain because it's transparent. Kind of like a little gap right there where there's not anything, so you will leave it. I think probably the funnest part of this, I mean this is pretty fun just dabbing, but I think the funnest part is probably
probably the pout knife. And it's just my favorite part. And it goes by super fast, like it doesn't take very long at all, but it's my favorite part. So you can put some red in this area, but try not to get any in here. Just maybe there's some right there and then there's not any more. So leave that. So if you like this video, then I would like it if you would subscribe and come back later to see um, when I post another video. I'm hoping I can do this every week, um, do one video a week at some point, but I'm just trying to figure out what days I can record it and upload it and that kind of thing. So. But I will be trying to put videos regularly, so an, an interesting thing about something a painting like this is every time you do it, it's gonna come out so different. Like the first time I did this, I left a big gap or a bigger gap right here than I left. And this time it's not really even a gap there. It's just uh, most of these gaps that I'm leaving, probably the cover over when I do later steps, but. So the tree is mostly red, so that's why this takes probably the longest out of anything, because there's the most space to cover. And if my canvas wasn't so large, I'd probably be done with this step by now, but that's what I had. I think I'm going to move to 9x12s for my other videos. I have some 8x10s that I'll be using at first. But then I want to move to 9x12s, especially this size for, uh, for vertical was not really a good idea. <laughs> but out of what I had at the moment, it was really the best, I think, because my other canvases were a little more squared off than this one. And I wanted it to be tall for the tree, but I figured it out, so it should be good. Here. And try to move your brush around because if you do the same motion too often then it will it'll look like a pattern okay so I've got most of it covered now I just need to brighten it up because especially up in here where it's um, this down here is pretty much going over white but it wasn't quite so I'm still gonna have to add more but especially up in here, it almost looks purple because blue and red make purple. So when you put right on top of blue, since it's since red is see-through, it looks purple. So that's why I'm gonna go put white at some point and then go back over with the red to brighten it. And let's see. Um I think I'll add the bright white. This is pure white. I'm adding it to the spots where there's like a cluster of bright red. So like here, here, up in here, where these there's like these 
clusters of red. I want to put the white so that when I go back over, it will be bright red. It won't blend so much into the background and turn it purple. And it's picking up some of the red so it's not really pure white anymore it's more of a light pink but it'll be fine you can just not worry about that I'm going to put a few dots even where there's not a cluster just um, so that there will be some bright red in some other places so that it won't be like here's some red and here's some red and here's some red and here's some red but yet there's all these spots all these spots that are kind of dull compared to the bright red spots so I'm going to keep it pretty bright throughout the whole picture. Mm. I'm going to add some in here. And if you're, um, one thing I think is something you need to remember is that you need to add water to your brush every now and then, or else it will get kind of sticky and it won't really want to flow very easily. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put some more of this white after I put my trunk because there are some spots where the red is going over or some leaves going over the trunk. So I'm putting all of this before I put my trunk so that there will be leaves under it, but I'm going to need to put some over it too, so it's looks more real. And especially up in here where there's some bright spots. Alright. I think there's actually some light here. Um, Okay, so I think we're going to do the trunk now. So, let's see. I'm going to stick with this brush. And I'm going to use Burnt Umber. And some Burnt Sienna. More Burnt Umber than Burnt Sienna, though. But the Burnt Sienna will kind of give it a little bit more of a red color. Actually, it might be more half and half. I think it's a little more like it. And... No, is it all I want to do? It's kind of... light. So... I think I'm going to add some of the phthalo blue. Just see what it does. I think that'll darken it up. Yeah, that's darkening it. 
So about half and half for an ombre de bird. And maybe turn on my red. That makes it really dark. So with acrylics, you need to layer. I'm going to leave this edge bumpy so the tree is not perfectly smooth. But with acrylics, you need to layer. So you tend to put your dark on first. So in this case, in this case it would be what I'm seeing in like the crevices. And then we'll put the light on top, and so you can have more depth in your painting. And I'm kind of adding, I'm um, putting my brush strokes um, in the direction that the tree is. So here is straight, this way goes slanted, and this way goes slanted. So that any of your sh um, brush strokes show. It'll go like you put the those on purpose. Just filling in. area. Put some uneven edges on that side a little bit so it's not so different from the other side. And this actually has more burnt sienna in it and it's not quite as dark so just adding burnt sienna to it will make it look a little like that. And I'm going to press my brush flat and kind of do this edge here. some branches in here and if they're kind of faded it's okay I don't really know what's going on in here it's like it's so blurry normally you wouldn't have it that fat with that skinny but we can go over with the red and kind of change that one here, right here, and
Okay. Okay, now we got that in. Um, let's see what I want to do. I think we're going to blow dry this again. And um, after it's dry, we can glaze over the white with red and um, put some detail in the trunk. So we're going to blow dry that and be back. Okay, so now that this is dry, I'm going to um, take my red. I need to get some more out. And I'm going to take it and go over all these white areas. So I'm not watering it down or anything, I'm just going straight with my red. I'm going over some of this other red that I didn't add white to, but it still won't be <clears throat> as um, bright as where I put the white. So it'll give nice light and dark areas. to go over this one last time with red. I'll probably have to put some of that pink and yellow back in because it's kind of getting covered. So you can see how it's really brightening it all up. It was not this bright a minute ago, but adding this over top of the um, white really brightens the whole painting up. Whenever I go over the tree, I'm just kind of wiping it off. Okay, I think I will um, add some light pink areas again back into it. Um, around some of the dark areas. So it looks kind of like it's it's peeking through a lot in here and Let's 
some of this lighter pink over here. Okay. Um Okay. And I think we will do some of our treats. I'm going to take my 3/8 inch lunar blender. Um, I'm going to take some burnt sienna. Let's see, is that, is going to show up? Yeah, it's going to show up. I'm just going to kind of brush this bark texture across. And then going up and down and in the direction the brush strokes would be. And there's like a long, a long piece of bark right here. I don't have much paint on my brush. I'm going to go up in these areas just a little bit and kind of and just a little bit of something up here. It's not going to be defined, but I do want a little bit. You could really make this a different kind of tree if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be one of these dark bark and really rough edges. It could you could change it to a, like a birch tree or something. Which birch trees probably have different colored leaves, so you probably have to look up what one looks like. But you could change it. Maybe if you like some other kind of tree more than this kind. And with this brush, when you're uh, using it, sometimes it kind of puts things in places you wouldn't really expect it to put, but doesn't mean you have to cover over it or anything. It's just fine. Okay. And I think that's good for that part. Um I hope you can see that on the camera. It's kind of similar to the color we already had. But I'm going to take my palette knife now and I'm going to 
with the Embleys Tritanium, with the Burnt Sienna, and some Burnt Umber. It's not so red. Do you want it more reddish looking though? Because the um, the I think the tree is kind of reflecting the color. The color of the tree is kind of um, I think getting some of this red color. It's kind of taking the red from the leaves onto the trunk. So I think maybe a little more red. And it should be pretty good color to use. And I'm going to just kind of scrape it on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And really, if you're expecting it to be a certain way with a palette knife, it's really probably not a good idea to expect it to look a certain way because it's just not going to look the way that you think it's going to. And especially when you're doing palette knife paintings, it's, it's going to look so different every time that you do it. It's not going to have the same look. It'll be similar, but it's really random, so don't try to control your brush strokes. Or the, don't try to control um, where the paint goes as much as you would um, another kind of painting because it's just not, it's not going to do it. So. See, it's kind of blobs in some areas and not in others, which maybe I didn't really expect that, but it really doesn't look so bad, so you don't really have to uh, go over it, you just let it happen. Just trying to add some up here. I don't want a whole lot of paint. I just want to add a little bit of stuff in there. Maybe a little bit in here. It's going to be really textured down here, and then as it goes up, it's not going to get as textured. Okay, I think our trunk is pretty much done. And now I'm going to take.
take my angle brush again and I'm going to take it and put more white down where the um, in the areas where it's the red's covering over the trunk. Should there not any weird stopper, stopper stopping, um, start or stopping points? Um, like we don't want any places where all of a sudden the trunk stops, so we'll cover it up with leaves. And Okay. And uh, I think I'm going to dry this real quick and then we'll glaze over the, um, put some red over the white parts. Um, maybe add a little bit more of the other red spots and then I think we'd be good. So let me blow dry this and I'll be back. Okay, so Okay, now that we have um, the white, it's pretty much dry. This is a little wet that's not completely dry yet, but um, I'm going to add some red um, dabs in some places. Kind of tie it all together. white areas if you go over the branch it's fine the red's so transparent that that dark color it doesn't even show there's red on top of it so it'll be fine That's good. Let's go over it. Okay. Okay. So 
We're pretty good, except I think we need to, there's a little dot pink right in here. Look at the little light. Can't see it very easily. Let me take my rag. I'm gonna wet it and take it up. I don't like that. It's too big. There we go. Press it out a little bit and add some here real quick. Give it a little bit more of the pink. I don't think I'm talking loud enough. <laughs> um, okay. And then the last thing is to add more of this. So I'm doing the yellow, white, and red, and then this one has more yellow, this one has more red in it. So I'm doing the more red one in a few places. Cut lines. And do small dots in some places where the sun is shining. I really don't know why there's lines in here of that, but there is. So. Some, add some more white to it. Just make it really bright. And just add a few of those. And there it is. The sun is shining through it. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty good. So I'm going to take my rag, add some water to it, and take this chalk off that I had put on. Let's see, anywhere I see it, I don't see it in many areas. I think I kind of covered over it and just wiped off that dot that I put. Um, cover over that and I'll put that dot back. Okay. I think, I think it's pretty good. This needs to be a little lighter. Okay. Um, I'm going 
to sign it with my Faber-Castell Fit Artist Pen. It's extra small. And go about a fingers width away from the edge and the bottom. So. Okay, we're done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and be on the lookout for new videos that I should be posting soon. Bye guys!